There's growing interest from the telco sector in the potential of multi-vendor disaggregated open RAN systems. But might the challenges associated with systems integration be a barrier to mass deployment? Well, to find out more, I'm talking today with Robert Curran, consulting analyst at Appledore Research, which has been tracking the open RAN sector for years already. So Robert, thanks very much for joining us today. Good to see you again. Um, now, is systems integration the biggest challenge for network operators looking to deploy open RAM based systems? Thanks, Ray. Uh, pleasure to be here, as always. Um, is it the biggest challenge? Uh, I think the biggest challenge is setting and managing expectations uh, in, in broad terms. Um, but certainly, in terms of uh, you know, making open RAM happen, uh, you know, reintegration of disaggregated components is the is the least familiar area from an operator perspective. So, so yeah, it does it does really form you know that biggest unknown, if you like, compared to where people are today. Um, Operators really have to decide as part of their planning, you know, which direction they're going to go in. Are they going to, uh, you know, DIY their own systems integration? Are they going to give that to, uh, you know, a specialist systems integrator, um, or are they going to provide you know, give that work to, uh, you know, to an open RAN specialist? So there's quite a there's, there's quite a few options there. So I think that's an extra part in the whole planning and decision making process. So getting into that area. Uh, you know, introduces them to to you know, new things, new parts in the process, uh, and new activities, which I know we'll, we'll talk about in a minute as well. So, so yeah, it's it's certainly the biggest. Uh, I think the biggest uh, kind of technical concern, precisely because it's the least familiar. Okay, um, now there's talk in the industry about uh, blueprints uh, helping the operators. Is it possible to have workable blueprints that the operators can use as a feasible starting point for their open ramp plans? Yeah, I think so. I, I mean, by definition, um, you know, operators need to understand, you know, how to put these pieces together again. And what's happening at the moment is the industry is is learning to do something. Not just operators, but operators, vendors, traditional vendors, you know, specialist vendors, new vendors. So it, it gets pretty natural and, and appropriate that uh, that you know the industry is trying to put together you know reference guides, blueprints of all kinds, uh, which you know depend on. Um, the different strategies operators have, what kind of architectures they need, and what their goal is for open land. Whether they are doing a, uh, you know, a replacement of an existing vendor, whether they are looking at rural, uh, you know, build out or urban infill or, or campus networks, private networks. Um, you know, all of those are, are different uh, environments, different contexts. So everyone's trying to learn together, and I think the idea that there should be blueprints, uh, you know, pre you know, predefined combinations of things, and and also from a system integration point of view. A, a clear idea of what the phases are to go through. Uh, that's all part of this this industry community learning in in real time uh, and and learning very quickly. I think as well. So so it's absolutely an important reference point. What we're seeing is operators are providing their own blueprints. They're buddying up with other operators uh, to to produce kind of peer to peer uh, blueprints for the industry as well as. Um, you know, blueprints from vendors and, and vendor communities. And on top of that, you have groups like the Telecom, Telecom Infra Project, uh, TIP, uh, you know, providing a range of, uh, of, of, of learnings in the form of blueprints there as well. So, so I think there's a lot of information, a lot of knowledge to draw on for operators. And I think it absolutely makes sense to look at where the industry is uh, and, and pick up on those learnings as much as possible for new operators, absolutely. Okay. Uh, but could the use of blueprints or, or pre-integrated packages negate some of Open RAN's possibilities and, and impact best of breed opportunities? Yeah, I think it's an interesting question. I think the reality is that's that's unlikely. Uh, let's put this in context. You know, the, the the idea of a kind of you know perfect plug and play um, is, I think, not only a slightly unrealistic expectation in the long run. It's also not really the necessary expectation. I think what the industry wants through Open RAN is, is greater choice, not a kind of unlimited choice. So the, practical, the practicality is that as long as there are enough combinations uh, that work well together and that people know how to integrate, you know, that's, that's sufficient. I, I think you know, in any context, once you introduce Open into the environment, uh, a sort of perfect, uh, you know, any combination is very, very difficult to achieve. Doesn't mean we shouldn't aim for it and learn along the way, um, but I think the idea that that blueprints will, you know, as a concept, will will prevent us from, as an industry, uh, you know, getting benefits from open and getting the benefits of more combination, more choice, more flexibility. Uh, I don't think blueprints are going to constrain that process. 
Okay, great. And, and hence your reference at the beginning there about realistic expectations for, for this particular sector. Um, Absolutely. And, yeah. and how can the Open RAN ecosystem help each other better in terms of op overcoming these systems integration challenges? It's, uh, it's really interesting. I, I think, you know, what we're seeing is the industry uh, trying to learn. I mean, it's very difficult to imagine that we would overturn you know, 30 years of, of systems integration knowledge, which has been built up inside of you know, what is now a small number of vendors, and kind of overturn that just by interface definitions and, uh, you know, and, and plug fests. Um, so I, I think that the best way that the industry can, can the ecosystems can, uh, can take advantage of this is, is first to, to do, do this openly, you know, share the expertise, uh, share the knowledge, uh, collaborate actively. There's lots of labs uh, that are being set up, have been set up uh, through things like TIP. Uh, individual vendors are doing this, uh, you know, combining to set up standing labs for not only for things like performance testing and conformance testing, but even the system integration process uh, itself. I, I think there's another part which is really important here that we shouldn't lose sight of is it does need investment. Um, you know, the Open RAN breaks a number of conventional models, and one of the models that it breaks um, necessarily is the whole kind of test test and measurement lifecycle uh, and systems integration for uh, for RAN subsystems. So the, the one of the changes taking place here is you know in making sure that more vendors invest in in more uh, you know lab type facilities, test facilities, particularly ones that are that are open, uh, accessible to other vendors, combinations of vendors. So so I think you know share the knowledge, uh, invest. And, and learn, you know, listen to what the industry is learning as we're going along. I think that's the way the ecosystem can best help itself to to overcome the system integration challenges that certainly exist, um, but they're they're not different in nature than any of the other challenges this industry has faced. So yeah, there's certainly a lot of that industry collaboration going on, and there are more facilities opening up. Uh, but uh, is this enough? You know, are the industry bodies, uh, you know, doing enough, and are they enough to help share? the information and the experience that, that's needed by the rest of the industry? Yeah, I think uh, there is a lot going on. I, I think it's evolving. Uh, you know, we're seeing more players get into the systems integration area, not only the conventional SIs, but uh, you know, companies who are, who are in the adjacent spaces, either they're coming at it from, a, from an equipment perspective or coming at it from an IT perspective. It's really interesting. Um, I think what's going on with, with groups like TIP um, is very positive. Uh, I think we'll see more results coming out from that. Um, the work to validate uh, you know, components and, and systems and combinations is also very, very valuable. Is it enough? I, I think hopefully it, it's enough. I, I think the proof is always in the pudding. The difference you know, in, in an open round context, the difference in open generally is always making, you know, making it work. I think standards will take you so far, but it's the practical execution of those, the application of those. That's where the learnings come from, and that's part of what we're seeing with with Open RAN in particular. You know, issues in system integration relate to things like interpretation of standards. You know, which again is a is something that that previously would have been uh, you know visible more inside individual vendors rather than uh, you know, visible in the community. So I think just keeping the pace going, keep trial, keep trialing, uh, you know, keep experimenting, keep collaborating. Um, I, I think you know we should we should be on we should be on course for open round to to fulfil what what potential it can fulfil. Okay, excellent. Well, there's certainly things uh, moving ahead. Maybe not as fast as some would like, uh, but you can definitely see. Just looking back, uh, you know, to a year ago to where we are now, you can definitely see that, that things have, have moved on for sure. So. Uh, thanks for joining us uh, today, Robert, and uh, for sharing your thoughts on, on this critical part of the uh, open RAN sector and look forward to speaking with you again in the future. Thanks very much. Thank you.